One. All right, there we are. See this thing works. Come on, no. All right, what's going on, everyone? It's your boy Manny Fresh with Coach Derek on another episode of Soapboxing Podcast. It's Saturday morning. I hope everyone's doing good. We got this COVID edition where uh, we're bringing in our guests remotely, and uh, it's been working pretty good, huh? Everyone gets to stay home at the uh, comfort of their own home and. Just hang out and chat, man. Uh, today, we're excited. Uh, we have Houston's own Marlene Espaza, uh, pro fighter, Olympian, uh, amazing, amazing uh, person. Uh, everyone knows I'm a super fan, uh, Team Marlene all day. Uh, so we're excited to have you on. Uh, Coach, what's good, man? We excited to have Marlene on or what? Yeah, I, I uh... I reached out to her, but she never did answer. No <laughs> so I figured, I, figured, uh, I figured I didn't have a pool. So when you call me, when you call me and say, I man, I, you, I never got a message. Or if I did, I don't check them. That made, My DMs that, are crazy, man. I say, yeah. That yeah. makes me feel better yeah. now. <laughs> but he said, I'm not trying to see that or hear that. So I, I stay off my DMs. He said, uh, he said, uh, Marlene said she'll come on the show. So I was, I, I was like, good, you got, you got in touch with her. But I, I, uh, I was, uh, with Rudy the other day. We were sparring at, uh, Chaletis, And, uh, he was there with Mike, with, uh, yeah. Mike, right? Michael. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I, and I ran into him maybe two weeks after the Sunisa fight, too. So I ran into Rudy a couple of times and I wanted to get you on this after the fight and uh, talk about it, talk about what we're doing now, uh, what's your plan. And uh, I was glad Manny got in touch with you. So so you come on the show. Well, I'm glad because I think out of like all the interviews I've done, be, uh, y'all's interviews was always like the most fun because y'all are chill. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like, uh, when are we getting off? Because I feel kind of weird. <laughs> But y'all are cool. We were last time we were on, we were there for a long time. Yeah, so. yeah, real long time. Still. And we were rookies back then. We didn't know what we was doing. We was just, <laughs> we were just, we were excited. You were, you were our first big name, and you're still our big. You're still one of our, our big names, and we, we, we appreciate the love that yeah, you show to us. So, so th- people, which is legit. Yeah, we, we've been, we've been lucky. So. We appreciate it. I want to jump in. I want to jump in and talk about this fight. I know Coach was interested in too. Uh, now that that the Sinise fight was the second fight after the pregnancy, right? Right. Right. Um, yeah, I had two fights previous to her, so I had my. I think. Yeah, two fights. Yeah. Yeah, because the first fight, the first fight back, you won the belt, right? Right, and then right. I had a fight that they threw at me because she had trouble with the girl. So they wanted to throw a girl at me that she had trouble with. Uh-huh. And I think her name was Osonio, Osonio or Sonio. And um, she had trouble with her. So I think they wanted to see, okay, you just had a baby. Let's throw somebody at you that she had trouble with. And they threw at me and I and I did really well with that. So, you know, we agreed that it was, it was something I was pushing for. Well, y'all remember, I was pushing for that fight really yeah. hard. Um, I had called the CEO. I had talked to Oscar. I was like, can I please just get this fight? And then they were like, well, if you want it, we'll figure it out. We pushed it. We pushed for it really hard. Um, it was a, it was a huge struggle getting that fight. Um, there was back and forth. She didn't want to take it. She was an A-side. It was all types of crazy stuff. Like, all types. I had to take L's all the way through just to get that fight. I so thought it was a I thought it was pretty, uh, I think it's pretty amazing. I mean, when, when, when you were pregnant and you were training, I mean, you were training right, right, right up to, to birth, man. And I kept telling people, I'm like, man, that's, that is, that's crazy. I'm like, that's, that's amazing that she's in there. I mean, I knew, I knew, I knew from a health aspect, it's good, right? Because, you know, they always want women to stay active and exercise before the pregnancy. But man, when you were putting in there, you were doing some work and then coming out, 30 days after giving birth and winning the title, I was just like that, you know, that shit, that shit's unheard of. 
Um, you yeah, take you <laughs> now i'm like dude what was i doing no it was it was good but it's because i had a c-section and people don't know and i don't like I, at first i was like i'm not going to tell anybody because i don't know how healed up i am now i'm fine so yeah it was like i had a c-section too so i was boxing like 14 days after a c-section and people were like and no one knew you know rudy knew you know uh, my husband knew and it was like okay but it was it was a uh, it was harsh at the time, and then you know jumping back in because I was just really trying to make sure that my boxing wasn't disrupted. I took a year off. I was trying to again like I want to show women that like you can do both, and to me that's big. It's always been big on me to feel like okay, cool. And people don't think it's necessarily something smart or something you should do. Have a kid right in the middle of a boxing career or an uh, athletic career period, um, and I just really wanted to show like hey, it doesn't mean everything stops and i think that's where a lot of people get things twisted like i think a lot of the women right now like a lot of the elite elite women think well man i have to wait till i get married i have to wait till i have kids but you don't really have to you just gotta adjust and kind of figure it out as you go and i think that's kind of that's something i wanted to show the little girls i don't want them to think you know 14 year old girls 15 year olds right now like hey i'm gonna have to choose a family or my boxing you know i don't want mm. people to think that so that was one reason why i pushed my body like to the limit like that you know we're we're always we always have boxers on the shows and uh they always some always come up with the the greatest injuries that that they hide whether it's car wrecks whether it's a broken arm or dislocated shoulder or a broken fist and one of the things that they always say is well you know i didn't want to tell anyone because i, I didn't i didn't i wanted to fight uh, having a C-section, I think it's the new. It cut me wide open. I was like, uh, but we had a good, I had a good doc. I had planned to, the whole pregnancy, I had planned to not, I was trying to 100% stay, stay away from a C-section. But it also like dieting and like working out and like mm -hmm. we were trying to not get big. And I was good. We were like, okay, we're good, we're good. In the last month of my pregnancy, I literally gained like 25 pounds. Oh, wow. Like he was just like, boom, for no reason. And my doctor was like, you could still have him natural. And then it was like, no, I'm little. How, how come? I wanted to be like, guys, I'm little. And he was big. He was almost 10 pounds. Oh, wow. Uh, so, the bowling yeah. ball. Yeah, everyone was like, yeah, was like, 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 no, 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 <laughs> no, we can't. So, yeah, it was a, it was, it was, now it's funny at the time it was like serious, but we, it was a struggle. That pregnancy was a struggle. Now, those first two fights, there were two minute rounds, right? Yes. Okay. And so, heading into the Sinise so, fight, I always push for three minute rounds. But but heading into the Sinise fight, that was that was the first. Now was that the first woman's three round fight, or was that just y'all's first three minute? No, I'm the only. Well, it's the first. I was the first woman to okay. do three minutes, and then I did that on my second or third fight. I did it in Vegas. Nevada's the only one who's approved it, and then um, Nicola Adams did it in the UK, and then I did it again with Sinisa. So it's the, literally the third woman's, but I was the first woman to do the three minute round. Now I'll be honest. When we talk, when I, when you know, coach and I talk, and when we were in, the, when we were in our boxing group, I, I, I don't, I, I wasn't sure how I felt about the three minutes, you know, because, you know, is it something that y'all trained for? Is it something that y'all ready for? Is it, you know, on a big stage like this? But if when when you when, during your training camps, that's what you're training for, three minutes. I've always trained for three minutes. Um, making the adjustment for two minutes was a lot harder, actually, because okay, you got to remember we're in the gym with guys who also fight three, who fight three minutes. So it's like, oh, we got to put it on a two-minute bill, you know? And it's like, and you, and it, in boxing, that's serious. Like, wait, why are we? The guys are like, what are we doing two minutes for? It's like, oh, it's because Marlene's fighting two minutes. And so one, it feels weird to me, regardless, because it's like, man, I feel like I'm, I'm messing up everybody's workout. Because I'm over here, I need the two minute rounds and no one's going two minutes with me. That's one thing. And then two, it was always the pay. Uh, women in general, including myself, we know it's like we complain about, well, we don't get paid the same and we don't do this the same. Well, man, we're not doing the same work. You're yeah. fighting two 10 minute rounds, not three 12s. So you can't complain about your money. 
So I want to fight three minute rounds and eventually I want to do 12s and then I can complain about my money. Until I'm doing the same amount of work, I can't complain about my money. And I feel like that's kind of the ultimate idea t- to me. It's like, mm-hmm. y'all can't really, y'all can't really bitch too much because we're not doing the same work. So I want to do three minutes for that. And I also don't feel that you can get the same job and you can't set anything up. It's a sprint the whole time. It's like a extended amateur match. It's like, go, 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 go. You got yeah. two minutes to get this done. There's no setup whatsoever. There's no mani- There's no thinking. There's no, you can't really manipulate. You can't like try to do any tricks, any setups because you only have two minutes. That whole minute is how things slow down and how you catch people off guard and how you set people up. And without that extra minute, I mean, it, it, you're asking for me to do what the men do in a shorter amount of time and it's not fair i uh i pretty much have left all the boxing tips, Marlene, <laughs> because on you know social media because uh fans are aggravating this shit. but <laughs> but at the same token there is one or two that podcast that i enjoy this basically fan driven you know it's fans doing the podcast so uh it also allows me to keep a, uh you know keep my finger on the pulse of what people say right and mm-hmm. my thing is to the people who dismiss women's boxing right uh besides being fucking morons the thing is they they try to say that you're uh comparing apples and oranges to my thing is, I'm not, com- it would compare apples and oranges if I was saying Marlene is better than, uh, she could beat this male or this male could beat Marlene. But that has nothing to do with boxing. And and my thing is the women should compete three minutes. The women should compete, it's women's fighting. So they shouldn't be compared to anyone else. But people are so quick to dismiss Women, fight, the people who dismiss them, are quick to dismiss women fighters and say, "Oh, it's a, you know, it's it's not like boxing." So if you get rid of the two minute rounds, you get rid of the ten round uh, uh, fights and make it twelve three minute rounds. You girls been fighting for so long, you can fight that. You fight other women, so everything's still equal. Uh, but by doing two minutes and doing the ten rounds, you are allowing. And, and I know the fighters ain't in control of that. It's promoters and, and, and commissions. You're allowing the, those fans who I'm talking about to keep dismissing, keep dismissing women. And I'm saying these gals is in the, in the gym fighting three minutes like everybody else. And so I think we need to get rid of that. The ladies need to fight three minutes, 12, 12 round decisions. However incremental they want to do it so it's considered a uh, safe fine. But a lot of, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of women's boxing. Big, I'm a fan of boxing, so therefore, if women box, I'm a fan of women's boxing. So the, this, the people who just miss it, they grab on to shit like that. You know, uh, I was bragging, I was bragging other when we had Clarissa Shields on, I was bragging about her amateur pedigree, right, and everything she accomplished. And I said, and I said, so when you start talking about amateur boxing, you winning, a medal in 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 the Olympics. That's that's a that's something no one can take away from you. But if people are dismissing it because you're a woman, and and the things that aren't fair at the pro level, that's what I run into. And I'm a coach, so I know you guys run into it a lot. And I think we need to get rid of that shit. And then people will start realizing these women are fighters, man, and they they doing the same thing. And like you said, at the gym. Because if you're not, if you gotta fight two minutes and you're not training for two minutes, you got a problem. Because yeah. you're gonna be in there and run out of time. That's just how it works. It's like, oh shoot. Yeah, wait, hold on. I need more time. Um, right. No, I, I mean, I, I completely agree. And I think too, that's why UFC has gone so much quicker and so much farther than we have. Cause they compete the same time, the same tempo as the men. Yeah, so absolutely. I think that we can just kind of get on that level. and. Um, we are an old school sport. Look, I've already accepted the fact that, um, you know, when I'm done and by the time I'm done boxing, that I'm not, this is, this is the part I've played. Have I, how have I done well for myself? I feel like, have I, have I done good things for myself? Yes. Would I like to be in the next generation? Yes. 
you know, this is the part I've played. I think I'm kind of opening the windows and I'm leading everybody. And then when I'm older and I'm not boxing anymore, I can watch other girls and be like, look, I helped you. Like, I helped you do that. Like the women before you helped you do that. And I wanted to be in that group where, you know, we are making all the money and we are fighting the three minute rounds and we are just like the men. But I've already, you know, came to 100% the conclusion that that's just not the that's just not the part that God gave me. So eventually we're going to get there. But that's something that I think as a whole, regardless of um, how me and the other girls feel about each other, I think we should kind of work together a little bit more and and put our differences aside to work as a team to kind of get things moving for the next generation of women so they don't have to struggle with the financial situation or with, um, hey, are, is the commission going to approve three minutes or are we going to get respect? I think that if we can just set, put this and get this done now, then the girls to follow won't have to worry about it. And I think that's m primarily my main concern. That's a, uh, you need the late, you need, right. Every excuse you can get rid of, you guys need to get rid of it because criticism and they say is, they gonna exist. If you was a if you was a guy, Marlene, they would be attacking you about something else, right? Yeah. So so if 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 you can get rid of the two minute round, make everything equal, even playing field as far as so so the critics can't latch on to that, that'll be a huge advance. I think But not that, on but not but only thing. that, but not only that, she bring you know, what she what she said earlier, what she said earlier, Marlene, as far as having the time that you need to set up your punches, to set the traps, to to execute a game plan. I mean, you fought that fight and it was a that that uh that fight was an amazing fight and I can I'm I was sitting here trying to think who, who what card was that on? Because I thought I remember going back in our chat saying, "Man, that was the best that was the best fight of the night between between yeah, Marlena." No, yeah, I think we we killed it on that part. Yeah, I mean, that was we killed it. We were the fight of Who who what show, what what card was that? Coach, you remember what card? My phone. You good? What card was that on, Marlene? Can y'all see? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I can see you. Yeah, we see. I bet you this weather, this weather's giving Hello? us. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what happened. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah we you, can hear you. You just freezing a little bit, but I can hear you fine. Mm. Can you hear us? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Hey, you hear us? I can't hear you guys. No. Go ahead and punch out and make in probably. Yeah. <laughs> Should I? Can you hear me? Go ahead. You had to send both of us a link, a new link, you think? Or wait and see. Let me, let me, I'm going to talk, I'm going to text her and tell her just to follow the same link. She's probably going to try to jump back on it. It's raining? Yeah, this weather sucks. I can't see the Instagram people love them, but I can't. That's just so far I can't see. Okay. Did uh, did you wake up to any storms last night? Nah, man, I slept like a baby. Yeah, me, <laughs> me too. I woke up this morning. And my wife's like, uh, uh, you didn't wake up through no storms. I said, nah. She, 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 she had me up all night. Now I put I put message I turn messenger off so nobody in my ring and all my my alerts and shit. Now I am his message in the group. Look, yeah, I know. Can you hear me? <laughs> and so now <laughs> shout message. out to Hyman. When we gonna Coach get him on the show? It, he needs to be on the show. Yeah, Coach be on it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's the age we live in. All this technical. And let me see that shirt, man. That's a, that's a badass shirt. Where, where'd you get that? Lift it up. Let me see that shit. I made that. I, 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 I saw, had a dude make that. Man. I seen uh, cause I was thinking about I was thinking about getting one made. Oh, I'm gonna get one made now. We got a. Uh, this was like a uh, a prototype. We need to put it on the website. But the new logo. Sorry, I don't. I don't know what happened. Can you no, hear it's, it? It's, it's probably the weather. Yeah. Yeah. You can hear it? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you guys. 
There we go. All right. Can everyone hear us? Um, I hear you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Good. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, that fight. Um, yeah. I'm saying that we. I feel like we killed it on that fight. Um, you know, it it was a. I feel like that was thing to watch, and then at the same time, like it didn't let down. You know, so no. it was like, oh, it was it was pretty fucking intense. It was pretty intense. Yeah. Yeah, you you had <laughs> me on pins intense. and needles. I think I was, everybody was like, I was on pins and needles. Yeah, like, what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> uh, I was like, wait, this is not happening right now. It was tripped out that fight, but it was a good fight. I mean, I feel like that's one of those fights in women's boxing that you can go back to right. forever and be like, all right, yeah, it went down. Like, what up? It, it was real. Walk us through. Walk us through the cut, man. When you got that cut and you came back to the corner, man. What, what, what were your thoughts? Right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Let me give you my critique first. Okay. Uh, I thought watching the fight, we all excited you fighting, and uh, we know that's you know that rivalry going on. I you jumped out to a lead in the first couple rounds. And as a trainer, I got to just tell you, I was like, Marlis, slow down, slow down. I thought you was, I thought you was uh, too excited. I went in. <laughs> uh, and, and it showed, yeah. it showed, I, I don't remember what round, I don't got a good memory, but I forget what round you started slowing down. And I could see you, I could see you was. It was the fourth round. Okay. Yeah, it was the fourth round. Um, so first of all, did that happen? Did you think you started too hot or what? I know. So this is what happened. I think I did, but I, that's how I fight. So I think that's what throws people off. Um, that's kind of my strength. So people are like, oh man, you're doing too much. But people don't know that I could do that forever. Except with this particular situation, God was like, not today, my love. Not today. <laughs> God is like, I know what you usually do, but not today. So, um, was, okay, was, so, was Rudy yeah, giving you that name. direction? No, so the game plan, now I can talk about it, but the game plan originally was she likes to be slick and she likes to box, right? Um, but she's also aggressive, like aggressive boxer, but she tries to be smooth all the time and has tricks in this match. So we we're like, look, I'm a way better boxer. So what we're going to do is we're going to box the shit out of her the first two, three rounds, fuck her up a little bit, and then we're going to go in. But what I did was I stuck to the game plan and I shouldn't have. When I started to get tired, I should have just continued boxing and instead still tried to be aggressive. I still tried to go through the, with the game plan, which now looking back, because I asked Rudy, I was like, hey, do I still go forward? And he was like, yeah. And I don't. I think he should have talked me out of that. I'm hard headed. If I'm tired and I'm not feeling that, I'm still going to do what I need to do. And I think that was kind of downfall with our situation, where I was kind of like, hey, like I think you should have coached me and told me, hey, don't go forward anymore. Like do exactly the opposite of what we decided we're going to do because that's that's boxing. I mean, you got to change it up. You got to go with what's happening at the moment. But it originally, um, I felt good. And I was, I was the first, second, third round, and then the third round, I was like, that's it. I was like, I was like, first round, all right, second round, hell yeah, third round. I was like, that's it, Merlin, you got it. I was, I, I saw everything coming, the shit out in the middle. I was like, all right, that's it, Marlene, you're the one. You did it again. I was already talking to myself like, that's it. This is yours. You, you told them. And then fourth round, the leg just left me. Like they were gone. Where I was like, in amateurs, Rudy used to pick my legs up. Um, and I was like, hey, you need to pick my legs up. And he was like, he, I was like, I'm tired. I'm like, all right. But then when I caught, I did catch my second wind at the end of fifth, and then I got head butted. And then I lost it. I felt like I lost the spin mentally. I didn't watch the fight um, until about a month after because I really wanted to assess everything myself before I watched it. Um, and in my head, I was winning. I got tired. I feel like I lost fourth round. 
And then I feel like I won the fifth round even with that butt, and I lost the sixth, seventh, eighth. And I think the ninth was the tenth round. Uh, like I was dizzy, and I really remember a lot after the last headbutt. And I thought the ninth was the tenth round, and I feel like I won the ninth because I really was like, this is it. This is my last round. And then I came back, and they were like, another round. And I was like, Fuck. <laughs> Yeah. And then that was another thing with Rudy. He told me we had two more rounds, but really we had three. So at the end of the day, uh, on all honesty, I feel like I got out cornered. I feel like I got out cornered, and I feel like there was just a lot of moving parts. The situation was just crazy. Uh, the headbutt really got me because I don't remember a lot of the the seventh round moving forward. I don't remember a lot of actually happened. I had to watch it to really remember remember what actually happened because I was gone. I was gone. I was seeing three. It was like, hit, hit the one in the middle because my head was just like, it's like there's three of you and I know you're shooting wide so I'm just going to keep avoiding them is really what I was thinking because if she would have been smarter and shot things like shot straight inches, I would have been done for sure. But she was just so wide and was like, okay, well, I know what's happening, but I don't remember a lot of it because I, 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 it was really painful towards the end. Like once it started jumping up more and more, it started like, I started to feel like woozy. I felt like I was going to throw up. And it was like, it was, it was pretty intense. That was a hell of a cut. Being a a trainer, what I'm hearing, uh, if I don't ask this question, I will be remiss. Uh, How long after the fight did, with what, with what you're saying, you felt like you got out caught. How long after the fight uh, did you and Rudy had a heart to heart and say, "Hey, we gotta, we gotta uh, not run into this no more and 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 be and fix, you know, whatever the situation is." Did y'all talk it out, whatever or what? Yeah, yeah. So I'm not like that, you know. Um, if something needs to be addressed, I think that's a, another reason why people don't don't like it sometimes. If something needs to be addressed, I, I address the issue. I'm not the type of person of like I'm gonna avoid, you know, any sort of confrontation. It's it's a tap thing happening. So it took about so I had a photo I had a photo shoot with Ford ten days after. Um, and I was really concerned about healing, uh, before I did the photo shoot, so I was trying to do everything I could. My face was super slow, like like a like the guy in Star Trek, where he has like the thing down the middle, <laughs> and then my eyes got black, and I was like, I have seven days, I have seven days, and that'd be on like the commercial for for a Ford. So I was like really concerned about that, and as soon as I finished that photo shoot or that video, uh, the commercial, then I went and I and me and Rudy had a, had a talk, and we talked for a long time about it. We we met up and. We just really discussed. I just told him I really wanted to talk to him about how I felt and uh, my concerns and what I think we should do moving forward. And um, I also had a lot of problems in-house, you know, with my husband. Everything kind of just went crazy after the fight. Um, It was like um, my husband was telling me that all the training I did, but I still got tired. And it was like, well, you're doing, putting all this work, but it's not working. And I was like, but you don't know about boxing. And then I have to talk to three and it was crazy and then I just nipped everything in the bud I was like okay this is not your business okay this is how we need to train and Rudy didn't really um, agree with with how I felt and so I had to we had to go ahead and uh, do different I went ahead and moved coaches oh I didn't know you moved coaches who who are you with now I'm, I'm training with the, with, his name's James Cooper, but it's Coop, so he he has some fighters, he's more, uh, people more in the SNC coach, which a lot of like, NFL players, but he does know his boxing, he worked under um, Emmanuel Stewart for a long time, and he kind of just, it, it's his thing, but uh, I went and I just did the, I did the transition for a lot of reasons, I mean, it was, I, uh, the the definition of crazy is doing the same thing over and over and watch different results. And I just didn't agree with what I was doing, and I don't think anybody agreed with me, so I just decided to go ahead and switch everything up. Let me ask you this, Marlene. Uh, you know I know Coop. I know Coop. Uh, 
was it? I thought Coop was with y'all. Like, wasn't he helping you before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was helping me, uh, but my husband didn't like him, uh, and everything was kind of like it was like a weird, like uh, Rubik's cube where it was like okay here and there and here and there, and it was like you know he's S and so she did help with the boxing. Rudy's always a one, you know. Rudy and me, regardless of anything, like we're he's day one, you know. Like we we have a different type of relationship where, regardless of what's boxing, like you know, I'm there for you, you're there for me, because he basically raised me. Um, so we agreed uh, on everything that the decisions were made together. Um, you know, there's no bad blood there, but Coop was helping me, and then I just decided to go ahead and transition all the way to Coop as my primary coach. And that's just what we're doing now. Master, before it got canceled, Coop was going to be the one working my corner. Did you say your husband didn't like Coop? That's what you just said? <laughs> yeah, he didn't like him. <laughs> <laughs> he was hey. like, no. I was like, why? The, <laughs> only, the, only, the only interaction I have with Ben, uh, with your husband when you came to the studio yeah. and he seemed pretty uh mellow, laid back. Mellow like, and, and, yeah, and supportive nice. like a mother. I mean you can't be real mellow if you're married to me. You know, <laughs> real. You, gotta, you gotta you gotta have a little spice, you know? Uh so don't let it fool you. He, you know, he has some fire in it. But um he yeah, so because of that it was um it was a big struggle. He it's, so basically, because I'm a female, again, here it goes again, the, the struggles of being a female fighter, is that you build a huge bond with your coach, but so do the males. It just seems weird when you're female. So yeah. it's just like, oh, you're, you know, it's like, oh, y'all are too close. It's like, you know, the guys are just as close with them. It just seems odd because it's the opposite sex. So I think that's more of a situation, and because Rudy's been with me since I was a kid, my husband was okay with that. But because I was building a new relationship or a bond with someone, um, my husband couldn't really understand that it's just boxing. Like, this is just the type of relationship that you build with someone, because I'm putting my life in your hands. So if I'm going to, if I F with you, I with you, you know, we're, we're going to roll together, like, you're, you're team now. And I think that's where my husband kind of struggled to understand how that dynamic works in that it's, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's an innocent relationship. I've, uh, I've never thought about it like that because there is a very, there is a very special relationship between a, be, between a coach and a boxer. And I think more so than any other sport, you know, you got basketball, football, and baseball, they have those relationships. But like you said, when you, when you're a boxer, your relationship with your coach is, is, is unique in the fact that you, you guys are going to war together and it's something that i really never put too much thought into until right now that you bring it up when you have and you know you you're you're a grown woman you you you're married and then you have this relationship with a with another male because he's your coach and so maybe it was hard for him to understand that it's not a female male relationship but it's a boxer coach relationship and coach I mean, Derek is always talking about how you have to be one or on the same wavelength, right? When you're communicating in the ring, when you're coming back to your corner, when you when you as the fighter are in the ring and your coach is giving you instruction from the outside, you have to be able to tune everyone else out and just hear his voice. And you can't build, you can't build, you know, you can't buy a relationship like that. You can't just pick a relate, you know. It, it, ha it has to be built. And so I could imagine yeah. there was some kind of conflict there. There was conflict. Uh, I call it speaking the same language. So that's how I always put it. It's like, yo, we're not speaking the same language. Right. It's like, we got to we gotta learn we gotta learn the language here. It's like, we got to speak the same language. And once you start speaking the same language with your coach, it's something that yeah, it takes work and it, it takes building. But first you have to agree that, hey, this is... It's like a, it's like, it's like shopping, right? For a friend or a human, yeah. it's like, hey, I like you. I think we're gonna get along, <laughs> and it's that, you know, it, it, you gotta really like the person. You gotta be, you, regardless of first before their coaching abilities. It's like, do I really even like you? You know, do I really want to be around you? Do I really want to trust you? Do I want every time you text me, am I gonna take you serious? If you find that, 
And with Rudy, I was really lucky that I found that really early in somebody. And I feel like that was one of the, the main reason that I did so well in my career, that I found someone super early that I tried and respected, and we spoke the same language. And because I started to build that with Coop, um, it was really, really hard for my husband to understand. So well, man, you, you, you in a hell of a position, girl, from what I'm listening to. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something. Take it with a grain of salt. But I, I, I made a post on Instagram this morning. And you and I, you know, we don't talk. But I was, I was saying the margin for error in boxing is so fine and so small. Uh, you know, a little bit this way, it's so over. A little bit that way, you win. And uh, to hear these situations that I, I, I didn't, you know, I don't have any information on that. Uh, and and being being somebody who supports you and wants you to win, you need to. Uh, you got a lot of compartmentalizing that do sound like me. And 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 with your training, listen, I'm gonna be the first one to tell you. I've been I, I, I've been training guys. I've been training 25 years. Been in use since, since training fighters since. 07, I think, right? And and Rudy Silva is one of the top guys here in Houston. You know that. And and uh, so he's got my, you know, I look at him as a colleague, but when we get him, we talk, uh, we talk uh, shop and boxing all the time. And uh, so I would hate, it's not a, I, I, I don't, and I don't, it don't sound like you're shitting on him or nothing. You're just saying it's, it, it, you want to do another thing, but you got a lot of things going on. But a husband and, and, and a child and a marriage, man, that's a lot of work. You know, I've been with my wife 20 years, but I still ain't got it right. So, <laughs> and she, she she tells me every day when I get to right. You know? but, but you got a lot of things going on. And so maybe maybe that Sinisa fight could easily, and, and I don't believe in excuses at all, period. Because if you don't accept responsibility for what goes on there, the rate you can't fix it. But if you had a lot of these things flying around, maybe they manifested themselves in this fight, right? And maybe maybe you came out hot and now it's hard and you gotta climb. You know, like you said, you thought it was around later, it wasn't. Uh, now you got butted and all that stuff. And I ain't making an excuse for you, but it sounds like you got a lot of stuff going on, man. And 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 from yeah. from this day forward, from this day forward. To be successful and fulfill fulfill what you have to do as the group. Uh just as a, a supporter, I, I hope you compartmentalize that. So get get this stuff ready with your husband, get the stuff with your coach, and get stuff with everything before you bite off. Because I know you won't get her back in the ring, as you should. And uh uh but you know, and, and we know women's boxes, y'all don't get a lot of uh, uh fluff. Y'all don't get a lot of uh, Oh, let's let her build up for five fights. Mm -hmm. No, nah, they're gonna put you right back in there. Right, right back in. You guys gotta earn y'all spot. Yeah. No, I I a hundred percent agree with you. Um, everything you just said. But first off, I mean, I've been compartmentalizing my whole life. Like I'm the queen of, of that. <laughs> you know, like I've been doing this like ten years old man. I've been doing this for a lot. I know, and it was a lot. Um, I think. That's why whenever it was all said and done, I came back and I just said I had enough and this is what I'm doing. So instead of kind of floating around, I was like, look, this is this is how I'm changing it. And I'm changing now. I'm going to go ahead and just say it out. So in all honesty, I'm happy with all the decisions I've made so far. I think I'm pretty much, you know, anything that was an issue or was floating around, it's not there anymore. And I kind of just addressed the situation and got everything fixed. And it could, you know, and too, I'm like, you, it's like, I'm not really going to blame anything. I mean, I, that was a situation that I felt like I could handle. And I was still, I was still cool with the fight. I mean, to be honest with you, if I wouldn't have been headbutted, I still think I would have won. But regardless, I knew I wouldn't have won because of the, the scorecard. But to me, and this is just my opinion, when you lose a fight and you know you lost, that's those are the ones that really mess with you, you know, like and they hurt your soul, you know, because you're just like, man, this person just walked all over me. Like I felt like I haven't even boxed before, you know. Those are the ones that that hurt me. Where I'm like, man, I got a lot of words and it, it keeps me up at night. 
Like, what does this person do or know that I don't know? And I've I've been in those situations. But with the Tanisha fight, it didn't hurt, like, in that way. It hurt, you know, my ego more than anything, but it didn't hurt me, like, it didn't hurt my soul. I didn't feel like she was doing anything or it didn't, I wasn't like, man, what does she know that I don't know? I don't know what you were doing, and I know exactly how to take care of it. It just wasn't my day. So I think that given everything that had to happen, uh, like, in and outside of the ring for that outcome to be an outcome, it still doesn't mean to me in my heart. I still feel like I could get in there tomorrow and it would never be the same thing ever. Like that was just universe. That was just God doing what God does. He was just like, look, this is what's happening today. Because there were so many things that had to go wrong for that to happen. And, Cause it was like literally my life plus the head. And it, and it was still a really good fight. Murphy so, Low. Murphy Low. 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 Anyway, what uh, what uh, what has been what what has been the reaction? What what have you felt like the fans' reaction has been? So two questions: one, what 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 do you feel the fans' reactions was after the fight? And two, where are we at as far as a rematch or what's next? Uh, my so at first, I was mean, not at first. What happened with the after the fight is what everything I understood. I've gotten back from people is that a lot of people thought I was winning, but I got tired and that everybody thought I would have won if it wasn't for the headbutt. And that was a decision. But I've got out of it or that it should have been just a draw. Like a should decision, not in the way like, oh, my men should have won, but that it should have been a draw. Um, And people weren't satisfied and I feel like people still don't know who's better. You know, I think that's the whole thing, like, who's going to win, who's going to win. And after a full 10-round fight or 9-round fight, people are still like, who better? And mm-hmm. I don't think anybody got any of the answers that they wanted is really what I'm understanding. And then two is um, we. I, I am obviously pushing for a rematch. I think everybody wants a rematch. I, don't, I think she's a little bit annoyed that people don't think that she won clearly. So she's agreed to a rematch but she's agreed to it at 108. So she was like, look, I'm the champion now, and, you know, you want me, and, you know, obviously, like, I won that fight, so you're going to have to come to 108. You got to, like, come find me. You were at one. That, that fight was at 112, right? right? Right, yeah. We're at 112. So she was saying she did what she had to do, and I mean, it's cool. And she was saying she did what she had to do to, to fight at 112 because she won fight. And I'm not even going to touch on that because that's a lie. We, was, we had a press like hell, you know. Um, but if we do fight, it will be at 108. And I have to figure out if that's really something that we can do or something that's smart or a smart move on my behalf. But 100%, you know, it's something that we're going to go for. So as soon as I can get to 108, we're fighting. <laughs> has, there been, is there, has there been any talking between y'all two? Back and forth. I haven't heard. I haven't heard it. I haven't heard much from her. No. Nah. No. Um, she talks to my ex husband, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Your ex husband. No, hold on. That's all hold I on. know. <laughs> that's all I know. I don't know the uh, uh, Yeah, that's all I know. That's all well, I know. Let let let. Let's, let's, uh, let's talk about who is who who has been talking. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you got an ex <laughs> We're this is we're getting a lot of news I'm breaking sorry, uh, yeah, breaking like news it. on the show. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry. This is just me, guys. Me. What uh so yeah. we had we had Clarissa Shields <laughs> on uh two <laughs> we had Clarissa Shields on two <laughs> weeks ago. <laughs> Uh-huh. We're getting we're, we're getting breaking news here, all, all kinds of breaking news. Uh, who's a, hold on, hold on, hold on, man. Who's a, who's your management, uh, Marlene? Who's your manager? Uh, Samuel Contreras or Sam Contreras? We call his name Samuel. We call him Sam. He's from LA. Oh, okay. We had Cla- yeah. we had Cla- well, we had we had Clarissa Shields on two weeks ago. Uh, Coach is a super fan. I'm a fan as well. 
Uh, but I'm I'm a huge super fan of uh, of you, Marlene. Uh, she came on. We had a good time talking to her. But then later on, in uh, earlier this week, she had uh, she had some words and she went on a little thirty minute. Uh, you know, I don't want to say rant, but she went on a little thirty minute thing on Instagram, uh, and she brought up your name. What's what's going on there? Um, I didn't even know until. So I was at the gym, we were doing hills, and someone said, uh, hey, did you see what Clarissa said about you? And I was like, I did not see what Clarissa said about me. And then they were like, do you want to see? And I was like, no, not really. I don't <laughs> really care. Like, she always does that to me. I don't really think about Clarissa. I don't care about Clarissa. I like Clarissa, but she has her issues because she has her issues. Um... I like her. I like her. I have a problem with Carissa. Um, she has a problem with me. And so I don't even know. What did she say? I don't know what she said. Well, I guess, I guess, the, I guess she got kind of, she got upset about, uh, I guess, I guess it was initiated coach. The fact that she said Marlene said it was an embarrassment. <laughs> Marlene, you said that she was, uh, it was an embarrassment that she called herself the goat. I think that's what started it. Oh, no, I didn't say it was an embarrassment. I said it was disrespectful. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I didn't say it was nothing. We, I don't know what she read, or maybe she tried to say that to make me look worse than. Oh, Rain. Uh, she wanted, uh, me, uh, she wanted uh, people to agree with her. Marlene, a uh, Rain. Yeah, uh, I said it was disrespectful. Yeah. I don't know who it was. I, I didn't remember the name. A, a, a writer from the Rain magazine called her. And yeah, told yeah. Her, I remember. Yeah, called her and told her that you said it was embarrassing or something. That's what. That's what started it all. No, I think I think she, I think she said, I think she used the word embarrassment, um, but quote unquote, I said it was disrespectful, um, because one in my and this is I mean it's a, it's a it was a question for me and I'm gonna answer it the way I answer it. I feel like it's just I don't I don't think it's appropriate and I think it's disrespectful. You can't call your the greatest woman of all time. Because there's still a lot of girls to follow you, and there were still girls before you. Like if you ask me, Tanker Pound would be a record or would have murdered her. But it's kind of like it's like, hey, who knows? You know, that's boxing. So to me, to call yourself the greatest woman of all time, that means all the girls right now who are putting in just as much as effort as you, who are trying just as hard as you, who are busting their ass every day just as hard as you, all the little girls who are trying to be better than you, to be just like you, you're saying, that's it. I'm still the deal. I'm the greatest woman of all time. To me, it makes no sense. We haven't even evolved far enough in the sport for you to call yourself the greatest woman of all time. I think it's, I think it's disrespectful. I, I, I don't, I just, that's just, just what I, how I see it. Well, I, I'll, I'll say this, right? And, and, and I, I like Clarissa. She, uh, I, I, when she was on the show uh, two weeks ago, I, 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 I got to see a different side of her. Uh, and I get a thousand percent what you're saying. And when, when you use that word goat, right? And it's a big word right now because everyone's using it to, you know, you got you got the whole Michael Jordan thing. You got it in football. You got it in boxing. You got it with Mayweather. And the one thing, the, and I'll say this, and, and it's a truly a bias, very, very biased statement. And Coach... Uh, Derek will probably give me a hard time later because I'm saying this, but when when Mike when, when they asked Michael Jordan if he's the goat, his response was, "You can't. I can't call myself the goat. It's the responsibility of everyone else to call me a goat if I'm the goat, right? And 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 you have you know, That's what I'm and, and, and and I think so. I think to your point, I think you have you, you have. A point and you know maybe somewhere along it got it got you know it lost in translation by the time it got to her you know she, something different might have been said to her but I, I would agree I, I would agree with what 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 when it comes when it comes to calling yourself the goat in any sport you can you can't take it upon yourself to call the greatest now you know yeah people like Muhammad Ali who who, who used to say it it, but he was established already. I, think. I I I don't know, Coach. Go ahead, because this the, the, you 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 like using the word to go, huh? Go ahead, Co where, where, the world wants to know, Coach. 
<laughs> you thought I'm the goat? I know how you feel about calling about Clarissa calling herself a goat. I think I think she's I think it's a form of uh, the same thing Ali did when he was yeah. telling Joe. That's what I was saying. Right? Yeah, I, I think it's just a form of uh, promotion, and yeah. I think I think I can listen to Marley's opinion, and I understand. I can listen to your opinion. I understand. And I understand what uh, Clarissa's saying. So it's, it's really semantics, and really, right. it really doesn't matter. It's it's people people prefer like you know like with Lil Floyd promoting the shit out of he never lost a fight. And so now there's a whole section of boxing fans who think if you lost a fight, you ain't nothing. Well, that's ridiculous. But it's just semantics. It was something that he was using to promote. Being a Clarissa Shields fan, do I think she has uh, the ability when it's all said and done to be the greatest? Of course. We'll see when it's finished. When it's all said and done, we'll see. If she calls herself that, she, she got every right to call herself that. Marlene got every right to say, I don't think, I think we shouldn't do that until it's all, until we figure out, you know, until it's 50 years from now and women been pocket. Or, or just let people say it for you. Um, I agree with that. I agree people thought that yeah. when they tell people, you wouldn't. To me, this is. The, I feel like if she, and this sucks because I have to actually say this. But if she was, if if we were all guys and she wants to do that, it's different. But I feel that our we haven't had a lot of pros yet. We haven't been on TV yet. We haven't. We're barely getting there. We're barely opening that door. It's too early for that BS. It's way too early. Like, like let's wait a, a little while until we can start really establishing or even start getting into that persona. You know, like the greatest woman of all time. Like the fact that you even to put the word women, woman in it means we're behind. Like you can't the greatest woman of all time. Like can't you say the greatest of all time? But we have to say women or woman because we're boxing and we have to separate ourselves because we're women boxers. When we can get in the ring and no one says, Oh, female fighter, women fighter, woman fighter, then that's when we're that's when we made it. The fact that you have to say greatest woman of all time just shows that you shouldn't be talking about who's the greatest right now. Like just don't would you agree? Would you agree? Because you was there. Would you agree uh, that Clarissa Shields out the gate? I don't remember no big buzz that she was supposed to win the gold medal that year in London. Was it London? Y'all was together. Mm-hmm. Uh, she she didn't have people falling all over herself even after she won. Uh, people wasn't falling all over themselves and, and and giving her no interest. Uh, I remember when she turned pro, and so she wins another gold medal, and then and then I'm like sitting back saying, I wonder who's gonna pick her up and all that. Like, Golden Boy came get you, and different different ladies got different promoters, and I'm sitting there going, it's it's like if she don't the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Like if she don't start making a mistake, they gonna pass her up. So would you agree that she's not? Uh, Maybe, maybe now, but she wasn't getting no big fan fair. And, and 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 this thing, you know as well as I do, this thing is very self self promoting. If you don't have any kind of machine behind, you. or do you think she? I don't know. You know a person, or do you think there was a reason why she wasn't getting no fan fair, regardless of the accomplishment she was doing? I don't care. You need to get some heat there. Man, go ahead and say it anyway. Um, <laughs> I see. So, anyway, I mean, it is what it is. I think like we can only talk about it. But, um, yeah, no, I don't think she, she wasn't getting a lot of attention um, after one. That's one of the reasons why she has her thing with me. Like, man, I don't care what she's doing. Now. She's doing it. I'm glad she's win. I'm glad she's winning. I'm glad that she's promoting women's boxing. Period. Point blank. Any publicity for us is good publicity. I respect her as a buyer, but she has had her little like grudge with me like forever she like i leave a bad taste in her mouth because of that because like i got attention and she was a gold medalist and i wasn't and it was like this whole like pity party for like three four years and then 
it's like one day she likes me, one day she doesn't, and then it was, it, and that, it all it all originated from that idea. And then she's obviously a amazing fighter. Like I'm not gonna say like oh she's overrated or anything like that. Like, Clarissa is a beast. You know she's freaking like she's clean, man. Like Clarissa is a good fighter. Um, I I I, yeah, I could sit there and watch her all the time. You know like with everybody she spars, she's a guy. Like she's a, she's intelligent. She has quick hands. She knows what she's doing, and I think that was the problem where she was like, I'm doing all this, I'm a freaking amazing fighter, but I'm not getting and I'm not generating everything that I need, and I think a lot of that just came from her. I don't think um, at the beginning, I don't think she knew who or what, how she wanted to come off, and I think with companies or people that were trying to pick her up, I think they didn't know how to take her. And because of that, I think that she lost a little bit of momentum at the beginning. And I think now that she has kind of like her identity and this is who I am and she puts that out there, I think now she's, you know, picking, you know, she she's getting to exactly where she should be. And I think that was kind of where she left. Where she just didn't know who she was yet. And she was young and she's still young. And she didn't really know how to tell herself or how she wanted to be put out there. And now that she understands how she's wanting to face the world, I think that now everyone's like, cool, you know, we, we know who you are and we got you. And she, I mean, she's a freaking good writer, period, point blank. I, 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 I'll say this. Uh, I talked to her earlier this week. And because uh, I've seen the IG thing she said and all that. And I knew when Manny told me he was coming on, and we wasn't talking about it, but I said Marlena be on the show and I said the IG thing. And and she said, I want Marlene to win. I want her to keep winning and I wish her all the success of the work. So at the end of the day, regardless, and you just did. To yeah. me, it sounded like you just yeah. gave her all kind of credit. Yeah. Just you know what I'm saying? So yeah, well, I got respect for her, yeah. No, we I I have major respect for her. I think that's why we have a weird relationship. I think there's respect, but there's also just like we're human, you know, so it's like, right. you kind of pissed me off a few times, I pissed you off a few times. But as far as the fighting goes, I think, you know, we have, we do have a mutual respect. Absolutely. I think, I think it's great. And I, and I, and I'm so happy that, that, you know, hearing everything that you say, giving her the respect and, and, and the props, because it works, it works two ways. One, you guys are generating attention. And, and like you said, it's, it's good publicity. You know, when you guys are staying active and you guys are talking and, you know, we don't have boxing right now. Everyone fucking misses it. We can't even get into the fucking gym. It's, it's, it's so stressed out. And so, you know, when we see, when we see y'all on Instagram and we're seeing y'all on, on, on social media and when you guys come on the show, it's good to keep that competitive edge, to keep that, 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 that mental game strong and, and, and be sharp. But at the same time, there's that respect. There's that, hey, you know what? I, there, you, you, we can't take anything away from what you're doing. And so it's beautiful. What you guys say, you know, what you guys say on, on social media and on, on Instagram might be one thing. But we no one else knows behind closed doors, you know, what you guys say to each other. Because I forgot who it was, but there there, you know, there there's a lot of like there's a lot of people that might have public beefs or 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 or, or, or that that competitive edge that, that they'll be talking smack or, or, or shit over over the airwaves but at the end of the day they have a good relationship and they have an understanding and a respect for another and when you have that like you guys look like coach Derek just said you know she wants you to win and you're over here saying you have nothing but respect or or, or you can't take away anything from her boxing game that's great for boxing and that's great for women's boxing and and that's that's what the sports that's what the sport needs, especially right now since we don't have anything else to watch, man. And so it's keeping y'all fresh on our minds. We're super excited, we, you know, to, to have these shows back on and seeing you guys in action and, and doing what you do, man. Because I'm telling you, these your fight was an amazing fight. You stole the show at, at on, on the card, man. It was it was a it was a bloody mess. You didn't leave anything on uh, 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 out in the ring. And and I'm super excited to see a rematch or to see your next fight. Uh, you know, w we on the show, we love you, we we support you. We're, you know, we we, we want to see you succeed. And and the rest of H Town does, man. You're you know, we we all love what you're doing and and and, and what you got going on. What uh, what are you hearing behind the scenes as far as any any shows? You know, what's Oscar talking about? Uh, you know, what what what's your game plan? 
Well, they're talking about starting starting it up in July. Um, depending on what states can actually do it, you know, Texas is obviously someone who they're the Texas they're hoping we can get it done here. But they're pushing for July at least to start something, uh, mm-hmm. but maybe without a crowd. You know, obviously without a crowd, right. so it'll be a little bit odd just for just for TV. And that's really what we're going for. I haven't stopped training at the beginning. Obviously, everything was in house. And then we'd have to take you to parks and like open places with, right. you know, four or five people at the most, you know, uh, coop can't like hold mitts. It's more of just like, okay, if you're going to hit something at a, from a distance, I coach you. So we've been working out still and still trying to like make sure that we don't lose any timing, still trying to get to know each other, still trying to speak the same language. And um, they're kind of bored, but I'm, if they tell me, hey, Merlin, you're going to fight next month, like, I'll be ready. I got to mm. stay out of the gym or stay inactive. Because you got to be ready, man. You don't even they're, know what they're going to tell you now. They're, they're tripping over there. They're tripping over there in, uh, in California, huh? They're keeping, they're keeping the state locked down to, like, August. That's, that's terrible. That's terrible for the sport. I know. You got yeah, like, and I think Golden Boy struggling with that too. So yeah, because um, obviously they're Cali based, but yeah, I think because Cali men, I guess I don't know what's going on with them, but I guess kind of like New York, you know, everyone's it's popular, it's super populated, and they're just really trying to make sure that they're trying to make sure that you know they keep they keep everybody safe, but at the same time, it's not easy. It's not easy right now for all the fighters. I think. Not not just financially, but I think more just mentally and physically. Everybody, when you everybody who's at this level, they've been fighting their whole freaking life. Yeah. Like that's all you do. So you're telling me the way I operate, I can't operate that way right now. It's so weird. It's like I don't even know what to do. Luckily, I have Saint keeps me really busy, you know, <laughs> but real busy. Man, I, we're on another level here, me and Saint. But I think that's more of the issue. I think people, uh, a lot of fighters are just mentally struggling with, like, how am I going to do this right now? Because there's nothing to do. Right. And you live your whole life one way, and all of a sudden it just it gets paused. So I, I hopefully everybody can kind of just, we can keep like this going and everybody gets some sort of guidance and, on when they're going to fight. You know, I hope everybody starts getting their fights. Well, I'm sure I'm sure Oscar's watching right now. Oscar, man, come on down with Elon Musk. Elon Musk is making his move to Texas. You might as well come on down to Texas too, man. Everyone jumping ship. We we uh, we opening for business, so we love. Uh, and then Joe, and Joe right. from uh, Joe from Next Fight Up said he's got something going on. Uh, I think when was it, Joe? When did you say it was the the twenty seventh? Let me see. So this was this was Joe who said earlier, uh, June twenty seventh in Houston on Facebook Live. Marlene, where you at? Need you fighting on it. Or live Twitter stream with us. We'll get you those three round minutes. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, man. So, so, man, so, so, I, so to so to summarize, uh, shit, uh, new trainer. Uh, I'm staying away from the person with shit. I don't know what's going on at the house. Uh, she said, "New trainer, new boo." And we made it to the, and we made it. Hey, cut that shit off. <laughs> and new trainer, and new, and we had to run away. Sooner or later, we had to run away. Yeah, yeah. We're good. We're, 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 uh, we did a change up, but everything's, everything's good. You know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with, uh, with boxing, and I'm happy with life right now. So, obviously, the virus is, Making things difficult, but overall, um, yeah, there's just made, um, but everybody is at an understanding. I think that's the main thing with me was I wanted to make sure that me and Rudy um, didn't have any sort of fallout or bad blood. I mean, I love that dude. I love, I, love, I love him for the rest of my life. And me and him are good and we have understanding and he's still involved. He's still involved in, in my life and all that. He's still involved in my booking, but it's just, in a different way and it's uh i think that was my main concern and on the on the switch and but we're 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 learning and we're we're going to be different though it's a it's good it's it's good news over here in, in my opinion that's what's up and this is this is a question i like to ask uh uh fighters once 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 boxing is 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 over 
or or you you go to the next level what do you see yourself doing in 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 life like what's what's your other passion that you want to see yourself get into other than than boxing or do you just want to stay in boxing for your whole life um i want to use boxing for what i'm passionate about so um i'm big on children and i'm good on i'm big on mental health um i struggled a lot growing up with depression and anxiety I've had a lot of struggles with that. Boxing really did save me. They say, you know, boxing has saved more people than it's killed, and I and I 100% agree with that. And I feel that sport through sport and through boxing and through what I know, I really want to gravitate towards like a a nonprofit. I have gone to school for psychology. I have like one year left for my business degree. Um, so I kind of want to combine the two, and I really want to work with using boxing or using sport to kind of help kids get out of their bubble, get out of their zone and kind of gravitate towards the mental aspect of children and trying to make sure that um, the youth and everybody coming up is in a, in a good place, especially for the, you know, the privileged kids or people that don't have both parents in the house or don't have everything that they need just at their fingertips. Um, that's really what I'm gravitating. That's exactly what I'm gravitating towards too. Once I'm done boxing, for sure. That's what's up. That's oh. what's up, man. Well, we really appreciate you coming on the show. Anytime you're on here, we have a great time. Uh, and anytime you want to come back, please let us know. I'll reach out to you later on, maybe between, uh, before your next fight, so we can get you on here and help promote. Uh, super fan, you know, you know how we feel about you. Uh, I want to take this time real quick. I want to take time real right, real quick right now to uh, to invite Earl Spence. Earl, I know you're out there chilling. If we if we can take a couple minutes of your time to get you on the show, just talk about what you got going on, and uh, we'd love to have you on. All the fans would love to hear from you, and and uh, so if you would uh, grace us with an hour or so of your time, we'd love to get you on the show. Earl Spence, we need you, baby. Uh, Marlene, thank you so much, Coach. You got anything? Uh, I'm be watching and rooting yeah. like always, and, and, and uh, I know personally. I know personally. I was with with Rudy just the other day, and and it was the same love it always was, and it's the same. You know, he he, he wants you to succeed, of course. You know that, but I'm saying everybody, everybody's in play, in play, and, and hopefully you get back on track. And, and when we start fighting again, man, go go to one and, and and get that, that ass. Yeah. That's what we need. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you got a lot of going on, girl. I, yeah, I, I'm tired listening to that shit. <laughs> <laughs> but but hopefully, hopefully that no, it's really, it sounds it sounds worse than it is. I promise. <laughs> All right, good deal. Good deal. <laughs> it sounds worse than it is. I promise. Hey, that <laughs> cut that cut didn't I leave did. a scar, did it? No. Nah. Are you kidding me? I was reminded every day. Is it's it? like kind of. I'm trying we to just like. We can't just, see it. My dad says I got good blood, though. That's why. There you go. I got, I got that is. good blood. It, it killed up. Real, it killed up nicely, but uh, twenty stitches. Yeah, no, it's there. I just nice. gotta be careful now. Like I gotta hide the sun and like wear sunscreen and stuff. You know, like it's it's weird like having to maintain something, but it cleared up pretty nicely. It's pretty smooth. That's what's up. Yeah, well, it, but there's a Well, thank you once again, H Town. It's another episode of uh, Soapbox and Podcast. It's your boy Manny Fresh with the great Marlene Espaza and of course Coach oh. Derek Collinsworth. Man, all right. Well, we appreciate hey, you. We love you. Guys. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you soon. All right. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. Bye. Peace.